Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Tournament Center here at Pro Tour Theros in Dublin, Ireland. I'm Brian David Marshall, and I am here with Matej Zadelkai. Hey. And we are going to look at one of these Master of Waves blue decks that we've been seeing, although this is a slightly different take. Uh, Matej, your version is 6-0 currently in six standard and oh, at correct. Pro Tour. Deck you call Blue Danube. Yeah. Tell it, us it, about what the name. It stems uh, from the name of the team. Uh, my team is called Danube Monarchy because it's players from Austria, Hungary, Germany, and Slovakia, so all along the Danube. And we play a blue deck, so Blue Danube, our river, so that works nicely. And Master of Waves, that's nice waving. <laughs> on, this is, on, on and this is a little bit of an evolution from the European Union, yeah. from the previous Pro Yeah, tour. correct. We, we switched up the, the teams a little bit just to try out something different. And it okay. worked so far. Okay, and there's, there's a couple of, uh, I think, unique characteristics about your deck. Yep. But let's start mm. at the bottom of the curve here. Sure. Tell me about the one drops. What are you, what are you trying to do? Judge is familiar, Cloudfin Raptor. Basically, the plan is to start on the board on turn one. Cloudfin Raptor is good to get aggressive because you have a lot of two drops. And Judge Familiar, although just the one one for one, we've seen in Craig Wesco's deck at previous Pro Tour that just the threat of it being on board limits your opponent's possibilities by so much. From like, and like it's something like an Advent of the Worm. It, for example. it can trade, not necessarily, maybe not going to trade one for one with it, but certainly force them to look at turn five or turn six, yeah. depending on how they drop. It's very good against Sphinx Revelation, for example, because yeah. they, they have to keep a mana up so they draw less cards, gain less life, right. and so on. Right. Okay, so then you said two drops. Let's take yep. a look. Vaporkin. Vaporkin, yeah, right. I mean, it's very surprising to a lot of people. Uh, not everyone is playing it. It only has one blue mana and a mana symbol, so it isn't that good for devotion. However, it evolves your Cloudchain Raptors even like even, even past. Even if they've evolved once. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, also, another advantage, it's also an elemental. So once we get later, that is relevant. Well, we don't want to give away all your elemental secrets. You, you've actually sandbagged a couple of people yeah. in this tournament who didn't realize all the elementals it in your deck. It did happen, yeah. Uh, Tidebinder Mage is a yeah. Merfolk Wizard. Tidebinder, is... yeah, it's it's the Tidebinder Mage is the great because it's a two-two for two with two blue mana symbols. That's super relevant. Uh, additionally, it's just randomly good against a lot of decks. Uh, for example, people are playing Frostburn Weird in their decks, and I can use my Tidebinder Mage to to tap him. Get it That's out of nice. way. And, it's, and one four is relevant. It's not just yeah. the double blue in the mana cards. You said you like this card. You yeah. would consider playing it even if you weren't playing a deck that was looking at devotion. Yeah, I, maybe if the if the card costs one mana and one, is it? <laughs> Uh, mana, I would probably still play because the four toughness is very important and it's a good card to just to get on the board get a lot of damage in and it's just overall a very solid card H have you given people frost burns this weekend I mean have you like yes. have you killed them with the guy yeah uh, I did uh, several times especially with Tassa you make it unblockable swing for four but we'll get to that okay so let's, <laughs> let's let's move on let's take a look again some interesting choices now hmm. Jace Architect of Thought four of this yes. is not something we've seen in the main deck no. of a lot of these blue decks yes why Jace Architect of Thought? What is that card doing for you? Uh, we've seen a lot of the other other decks, uh, or other people on Mono Blue, basically run Biden of Thass on or other four drops. But we figured Jace Architect of Thought is uh, really good against the aggro decks because you play him, you plus one him, gives you a lot of devotion and it's very hard to kill. Uh, additionally, against Control, it's, it just gives you additional cards to pump up. And the biggest difference is that against Control decks, uh, it's a Jace battle. Uh, you but our deck plays Jace, we minus two get new cards, and they have to plus one it because we have a lot of creatures threatening to kill their Jace. So it's very relevant just to use this as an advantage in the control matchups. Okay. Uh, claustrophobia, another card I think <laughs> probably catches a lot of pe people by surprise yeah. when they see it in your main deck. Mm -hmm. and or even in your deck at all. Yeah, uh, actually Claustro is really good, uh, especially against uh, cards uh, such as Boros Reckoner, which caused us a lot of problems. It's very hard to get, get around. Uh, also, maybe cards like Chandra's Phoenix, uh, Nightvale Spectre, and other just hard to remove creatures. Um, it gives you devotion. Uh, it taps any guy, even Polukranos right. uh, or Arbor so, Colossus. So it's, it's removal that gives you devotion. That's which important. Which is unbelievably important in this yes. format. Uh, also, I find kind of interesting as we, as we look at Dissolve, fairly self-explanatory, yep. um, that this is where maybe some of the blue decks we've looked at have been like almost pure aggro decks. Mm -hmm. This is really much more, feels much more like a classic Merfolk deck to me yeah. in that it's aggro control. You Correct. have all these aggressive early elements yeah. and then you're backing it up with, with Jace. You're backing it up with Claustrophobia. You're backing it up with counter spells. Yeah, it works really well with the cyborg plan where in some matchups you become the control deck and with the, this main deck setup, it works much better. Okay, so let's take a look at what we're doing with all this devotion. Yeah, yeah that's the plan. Now, Master of Waves, 
This is what you know we're seeing in the more aggressive decks. But you're saying your deck isn't really a Master of Waves deck? That's not sort of the central focus of what you're trying to do? Yeah, Master of Waves is an important card. Uh, obviously, when you have a lot of devotion, it just creates a lot of uh, creatures and so on. But I actually didn't get so many kills with Master of Waves just because people have been kind of anticipating. However, it still plays a super important role against Mono Red because it has protection from red, <laughs> obviously, so that helps. And in general, it's a good win condition. And uh, like we said previously, sometimes on the play, I can get to keep Claustrophobia on turn three, and then I can get play the Master of Waves, already have a sizable amount of tokens and can put right. some pressure on the opponent. But the most important card in the deck is certainly Thassa, God of the Sea. Uh, it's won the most games. Uh, it's just a huge beater, 5-5 five, five for, five, 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 five for three, if you have Devotion, which isn't <laughs> usually a problem. And uh, the ability to make a creature uh, unblockable for a turn is very relevant with Frostburn Weird. It can leave it to itself, so five damage just is very fast. Right. And additionally, the Scry 1 helps in both aggro and control matchups to get you to, you to the cards you need. So, I mean, it's, it's just got to be amazing going into turn four of a game and just knowing that you're going to have, like, this so you know 50 percent better deck yeah. card selection every turn yes exactly yeah it's it's really good uh, uh on, not only because of this and the control matchups but especially in the aggro matchups where you can go turn two guy for two devotion like a frost weird turn three thassa and on turn four you, you have like uh one of the other uh, other guys you can play claustrophobia you can play two smaller guys and attack and it's just a lot of damage very early and there's just no cards that are capable of dealing with thassa in this format yet right so let's, let's go to the next slide, look at your lands. I'm really curious to see what you've done with Nikto Shrine to Nyx in this stack. Nothing, as you can see, nothing. Uh, we, we're not playing, we, we were aware of the card, but we didn't want to play it in the deck. We played 19 islands and four mutavolts. Uh, whereas we debated actually running fewer mutavolts because the hands with uh, an island and mutavolt are deceptively uh, not good. Because <laughs> in long term, you need a lot of islands. So I did keep a few island uh, mutavolt hands, but uh, those didn't contain any uh, two mana, uh, two drops in blue. So. Uh, also relevant because we didn't decide uh, to, we decided not to run Night Vale Spectre in the main deck. If we did, we would have run only three Muta Vaults and 20 Islands, but no Nyctos because we think it's a bit of a win more. Sure. In a situation where we already have a lot of stuff on the board. Sure, we, we, we've seen decks that are using Nyctos to go, you know, you know one drone drop, two yeah. drop, three drop, and then like too big, like a four drop and a five drop sure. or something crazy like that. Whereas you don't really have no, anything no. to do on top of that. You're no, looking no, no. to establish yourself very early, disrupt their plan mm. and, and get in. Yeah. The only advantage I, I see is when you get a Thassa and Jace on the board, it gives you more mana to make your creatures unblockable uh, and start swinging uh, and you just frost and weird at the same time. All right, let's take a look. Let's just go through your sideboard here and see what we've got. Uh, Negate, Essence Scatter and Night Vale Spectre. Yeah, uh, I actually don't really like uh, playing cards such as Ascent Essence Scatter in the sideboard, but however, what we talked about getting into the control matchups. Essence Scatter is a really good answer to Pelucranos. It's a really good answer to uh, black, white, red creatures such as uh, Obzera, Bloodburn of Viscopa, Desecration Demon, and others, right. uh, where you have your claustrophobia to deal with them, but not always you can you know get them. Right. So uh, extra counter is fine because you can afford to leave your mana up. Negate is uh, another card against control, and Iowa Spectre comes in uh, usually if we board out some of the smaller creatures. Okay, and let's. Uh power through here, one extra island for the control matchup. What's domestication for? Is that for the mirror? It's the best card in, in the sideboard by far. It's the best in all the matchups. It's great against uh, in the mirror matchup. You can steal Thassa, and if you have your own, you can uh, put it in the graveyard immediately. You can steal their Night Vale Spe Spectre and com completely rendering their Devotion nil. And it's great against Boros Reckoner. It's great, great against some other cards as well. Uh, to add to that, Ratchet Bomb, uh, mainly used because we were fearing Miscutter Hydra. And Etherling ties in nicely with the island because we only have 23, <laughs> so we need one extra. You need to be a 24 minimum to be able yeah, to reliably so cast Etherling. Etherling, Etherling comes in control, Biden also against control as a one-off just because it's legendary. Fun funnily enough, we also boarded an island in the aggro matchups, but we take out a Mutavolt, especially because we talked about the risk of island Mutavolt hands just so big. Right, so you stay on 23 lands, but you just switch yes. up the mix. That's really interesting. Uh, six and oh, it's been working for you so, so far. far. Yeah. I'm going to let you get back to the floor, get back to the hard work. Matej Zadokai, Brian yeah. David Marshall, Thassa, God of the Sea. See you uh, back on the floor. Ride the wave.